Hello. Everybody's patched in. Good. I'm here to tell you of a story that is still ongoing. In the US, this case has not been solved yet. I've personally done some studies on it. I've questioned people, been to the places I'll be talking about. But I wanted to tell all of you new recruits here from all over the globe, not just the US, everywhere. And after it's done, yeah, we'll go over feedback and what you guys think, any suggestions. And these are the kind of things we'll all become coming up against once you're agents in the field. These are the things you will have to deal with. Some stranger than this, some creepier than this, some shadier than this. But I've been asked to talk about this specific story. And like I said, I'll give my opinions on it. I've, and then afterwards, you guys can give yours as well. But this takes place in two places. Uh, Long Island, New York. And Rehoboth, Massachusetts. <clears throat> Specifically, Islip, uh, New York. On Long Island in New York, you know, some people like to say Long Island is its own thing. Anyway, I have experience with Long Island, the Nassau and Suffolk regions. <clears throat> it starts like this. Okay. <clears throat> there is a person, a female, lived in an upstairs apartment of a house. <clears throat> All right, on Long Island. And she just disappeared. Up and vanished one night. Um, we say night because she never appeared. Like the next morning, she was supposed to go into work and, and didn't. <clears throat> we had talked to her people at her place of employment. It starts like this. Apparently, uh, you know, right out of the gate. People we talked to, the people who were downstairs, uh, fellow employees, friends, family as well. She'd been suffering from really debilitating headaches for a good month to two months before the disappearance. <clears throat> so she's having headaches. Apparently, she was talking about like hearing voices, but not like full-on voices, but she was hearing things, voices, kind of whispers almost. She was seeing a lot of flashes of light too. We kind of debunked that as they live closer to the highway, so you probably get a lot of lights from cars and stuff. <clears throat> Maybe that wasn't the case, but, um, and I know from personal experience when I get bad headaches, Light becomes an issue sometimes. Sound becomes an issue as well. And smell. <clears throat> you don't want to smell anything. It makes you sick. Hearing things will really mess you up. And some, not everybody has the, the light problem, but bright light problem. Anyway, these are the cases, right? This was uh, a year ago. I believe it was June 28th. the night of June 28th that she would just up uh, and disappear. Now we're counting it as the night because, like I said, her she was supposed to be in work at, I believe, 6 a.m. She didn't show up for that, so it, technically it could have happened a little earlier, but the strange part about this is there are cameras. Uh, her herself, the back entrance, has one of those ring cameras from Amazon, right? <clears throat> one of those. And we check the footage from this. 
it was running all night. So, and the front of the house also has one that can see outmost, and there is one on the side as well. We checked all of these. They're, they ran all night. No activity, no people on this, pretty much nothing on any of these. Okay. And we know she's in the house because the people downstairs reported, you know, hearing noises. They heard her in the kitchen and whatnot. At about the last time, the one person heard them was 12. And then the other person who's down there came home at about 3. <clears throat> so... There was no, no, and they were up through six. They were later, and they, uh, they didn't hear anything. So the last known time was before that in the kitchen. And uh, another strange thing, there was no, the doors were locked. Now you could be at, well, inside door locked. Just lock it when you go outside. No, the outside door was locked as well. And that, does, that can only be locked from the inside. These were both locked. We had to get in to these because we were called first. Because of the surrounding strange circumstances, we were called first. All right. Like I said, poof. No way out. Doors are locked. No one's in. We get in here. No one's in here. Because the first things are, you're not thinking disappearance first and foremost when the doors are locked. You're thinking, oh, fuck, you know, we're going to come across a body. No. no one. And you're out. Everything was in order in the rooms. Uh, nothing was out of place at all. There was no, I mean, I guess I wouldn't know if it was out of place, but there was no sign of anything happening here where maybe there was a struggle you know, or a robbery or anything of that nature. All right. Now, this person had only been here for, I think it was eight months <clears throat> before disappearing. Originally from Roe with family still there. I'll get to that in a few minutes. <clears throat> Like I said, the first thing we did was check here. Um, we searched around the house. Like I said, we looked at the camera footage. They all have little SD cards in them. Nothing. They didn't seem to be tampered with. We put them to our experts, our, our uh, electronic experts. They weren't tampered with. These have the dates on them. These were specific. They were not messed with at all. There was nothing on them, uh, except the... I mean, the one person coming in at three showed up on the one. Nothing, the ring, specifically right outside the door. Now, like I said, there's one on the side of the house. You're not getting anything. One in the front, you would have seen them leave through the front. The ring has a wide view, too. You would have seen them leave through the back. Now, there isn't a camera on the other side. Could they have dropped out the window? It's a pretty high drop. The window wasn't locked, but here's the thing. How are you getting out that window? You're opening the window. You'd have to open open it, drop down, which would have also created sound. And then you'd have to close. The window was closed, so you'd have to somehow close it before falling down. Like, I can't see that happening. <laughs> All right. I just think they up and disappear. Now, I'm more the person to believe that because of things I have investigated in the past, okay? In some ways, this is a bit normal compared to some of the other shit I've encountered, right? Except, you know, we put out flyers, you know, and told the family flyers, all that stuff. No one sees them. Sees her on Long Island. No one sees them, right? Never comes back. 
There's up the word again. There's no phone calls to anybody, no friends, family, nothing, no emails or any of that shit. <clears throat> Interesting little tidbit is they have a lease. And apparently, a couple of weeks prior, now the headaches and stuff would have already been happening at this point, and the hearing of voices and then the light thing. Prior to that, I'm trying, I can't remember how much time exactly was left on the lease, but they paid it all off. They said, told the landlord it was all paid off. You know, they, they said, can I give, she said, can I give, you know, the rest of what I owe now, just so you have it now, and they agreed to it, <clears throat> you know, which is an interesting thing. Why would you do that now? Do you just not want to screw somebody over if you're vanishing into thin air? Or are you expecting to come back vanishing into thin, thin, thin air? Were they taken? You could call in UFOs. Was that a thing? I don't know if this person dabbled in any kind of magic type stuff as well. Some complicated spells can cause this. <clears throat> I would almost move more towards the UFO thing. I don't know. I don't know enough of this person's history up until this point. Everything's been normal. They never have been arrested or had any kind of track record. They don't, apparently, according to family and friends, they smoke some weed occasionally, drink. There were the drugs involved. Never got into arguments. Apparently, this person rarely, if ever, raised their voice, so... You know... <clears throat> There's not some kind of CD thing underneath, from what we know. I don't think any of these people are lying <clears throat> as well. I said, up, up and disappear, right? We've had instances like this now. I sit here and say, was a portal maybe involved? I've been in, I've dabbled in this stuff. I have a history of pretty extensive history with portals and things like that. You can open them up. They're very hard to open up. You have to go through a lot of effort to do this. I don't know if that's the case. And she was able to do this through gathering specific things and whatnot. Sometimes portals will leave behind changes. Like sometimes there'll be burn marks and stuff. I didn't see any of that. Um, it is possible. I don't know get out of here quickly. I don't know. Was she being chased? Was there paranoia involved? Did she maybe contact some people she probably shouldn't have who know much more about this stuff? I don't know. Some people make deals with these uh, alien species from other galaxies and planets. Alright, some people make those kind of things. I know it sounds crazy. We don't know. You gotta. You have to take everything into account. I even thought of a thing where maybe this person has like a ghost type thing. You could, there are people who have been able to kind of. It takes a lot of practice. This is why I kind of don't think it happened, but you never know. Years of practice, you can almost break yourself down to like a spirit form and go through things while then reforming you back very hard process years of practice to do this i don't know here's the thing this is the one i don't think they're done right <clears throat> month goes by we tell the family listen put up flyers back in your hometown as well sometimes people end up back where they grew up family's still up there. <clears throat> for all you know, I said Rehoboth. For all you know, that possibly know. This is on the edge, kind of right in the bottom edge of the Bridgewater Triangle. Paranormal experts and people call it. This is a place in Massachusetts. It is literally a triangle, like a Bermuda Triangle that has a lot of UFO sightings cryptid sightings, uh, paranormal activity out, just tons of it, ghost sightings, all types of weird things. 
which is interesting. That could play into the when they were younger living there. Maybe I don't know their backstory other than these things I told you just before. I don't know if they were into any weird stuff back then. We went there. Why did we go there? A month later, it was 35 days. There's two, she reappears. There's two sightings. Now, this is where it gets a little bit creepy. Also, a little kind of otherworldly, or I don't know, I'm going to describe it. That's what happened. Okay. There's two sightings. One are in the woods. This came off of a trail cam, like a deer cam. People typically will put these in trees to, you know, monitor for deer, see if there's any there. Any hunters do this, and sometimes people will just do it to see what's been on their property, right? Just to see how the deer, where they're traveling from and stuff, at times and, 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 and the like. Okay. Now, the only reason th this person, for both people, but I'll go the worst with they contact the family because they saw the flyers of the missing person. I contact the family because the person looked familiar in the trail cam. Now, they said from their trail cam, this was at, uh, I think it was like 2.35 a.m., some shit, between 2 and 3. It was nighttime. Trail cams are you know, infrared, so they're not, they don't put off light, they're recording, you know, they can, they just record night vision. <clears throat> she pops up on this trail cam, nothing else happens, except the time she's on there, and it's about, she comes into frame, she's walking, there's a lot of trees, this is the woods, not super deep woods, there are houses here and stuff, but this is enough wooded area where there's no, this house this person owns is, was about a quarter mile from the, the cam itself. And then even behind there, there's still much more wooded area before you get to the next house. It's not overwhelming. It's not miles and miles and miles, but it's enough to where people typically aren't just hanging out here. And here's the thing. They see her walking past. They look at, they're looking through the footage. They always look through it every morning. They're walking past, right? They walk towards some trees, kind of like right on the edge of the the one sight line of this thing. And they kneel down. It looks like they're almost kind of digging for something. They get up, walk towards another tree, kind of look up towards the sky, moving their head around. Well, then they walk towards the cam itself and look up at it. And the guy, I saw this footage too. Not as creepy as the person thinks, but you gotta remember this person has not seen this kind of stuff in the past. Almost dead eyes looking up at the trail cam as if she's not seeing if it's watching her, but if it's something that she's been looking for in this area. It isn't, she walks off and just walks out of frame, walks back towards, walks out of frame. A few things here, like I said, are interesting to me and a little, I say otherworldly, but like a like a power related maybe she was just walking at 2.30 a.m. All right, this was a night where the moon was not full this was a quarter moon not a ton of light in the woods you would have needed a fucking flashlight most nights even with a full moon you're gonna need a flashlight she had no light source. She was walking around this area and perhaps the whole woods until she spotted on this cam. She could have been searching these whole woods, this whole area of woods. She has no camera. I mean, no light, flashlight, no light source. She's walking around and she's in just clothes. She had jeans on like a sweatshirt, which is interesting because this would have been like a later July. <clears throat> Either way, she was not, it's not like she was in some ghostly thing or anything, you know, just real close, no light. That means she was seeing everything. She was walking, saw the camera, walking to the specific spot and started to like dig, walk to the other thing, looked up. No light source. She was seeing in the dark here with no light. That is extremely interesting 
and impressive. <laughs> That's the first thing. Like, what is going on here? Um, I said, we looked at that footage, we saw it. We sent it to more people to analyze. We're going to try to find out more stuff. I went there and talked to this person, got that footage. Um, he also said after that, nothing had ever happened. Never picked her up again on the trail cam. This is another, like, almost a month later. Nothing picked up on the cam. Again, nothing weird either. He went actually out there, and we did as well, to look where she was digging. It was dug up, but there was nothing. It wasn't too deep. There was nothing there. Nothing weird about any of the trees. Here's another fucking weird thing. There was no footprints anywhere in there. And this guy has his trail cam up. There was, there was animal footprints, but no human footprints. She didn't leave any footprints as well, which is fucking strange. And the trail cam and everything looked like she had sneakers on, so... No marks. She's extremely light on her feet, where she would not leave a print. Or she was elevated off the ground. Right? Okay. That's the first one. We need to continue over. We're sending another group out to that area first to really bring a lot of tools in to do a lot of crazy stuff. Ground samples, fucking dirt samples, I should say, from the ground. Everything. A f two days later, I believe it was. Two days later. This was at uh, 3.08 a.m. This was on a person's ring cam from their house, right? And there's a couple strange instances here, too. Second time, she goes to this person's house. Apparently, she's at the front door. They have a motion light, too. Strange thing, motion light never goes off. The person decided, because some people won't even bother with the rig cam. These things go off when someone, it spots someone. Never went off. It recorded her for, I believe it was an hour and 45 minutes. She was standing dead still in front of this thing, looking at it. As soon as she was looking through it into the house, did not blink once in this amount of time. Now, the reason the person looked at it is they just happened to go outside to get their paper in the morning. And there were like burn marks that would look like shoes on the concrete thought it was weird kind of tried to sweep them away it wasn't dirt or anything like that it just happened to be like you know what? i want to look at the cam i looked at the footage it was her about the pictures and they contacted the family as well and then they contacted us the family contacted us and we were talking to them this thing never it makes dings and even if you don't hear it, it will pop, you would see the history on your phone of it. No history on the phone. Didn't make any sound. She did not blink. She stared into this thing like she was staring into the void. Like she was looking like... It was extremely unsettling. And we show the family this, because this is up close. The other one, trail cam, wasn't this close, obviously. The family said something was off, but they can't put their finger on it. Like, it was her and everything, but something was off. I don't know. Was there a possession here involved? I don't know. Was she being controlled? I don't know. We don't know. Why? She, nobody knows. The people never saw her in their lives. They never saw her ever. Why did you choose this house? We know the father, the husband father, worked for a competitor of ours about 10 years ago, developing interest in technology. We'll not get into that now. I don't, I don't know. Did she maybe come in contact with this person at some point? Maybe he's hiding something from us? We don't know. We want. We do have a follow-up interview. They were unsettled, though. Why the fuck were there, like, burn imprints of shoes there? She must have... What the hell temperature was she running? That it would have stayed there now 45 minutes standing in the same place. Something generated this? What? It's not normal. I don't know. I've had some theories of maybe she was experimented on when she was younger and never knew about it. Like I said, a lot of strange stuff happens in this Bridgewater Triangle area.
she had been experimented on and, and she was, she started getting the headaches and stuff because she was activated, as we say. We have, we've had people who have all of a sudden developed powers, abilities, and they activate. Nothing happens for years and something causes them to activate. They'll disappear, they'll go on fucking crazy fucking rampages, they'll do strange things. Almost like they're agents, spies almost. Very interesting things. Is this a possibility for her? We don't know. Did she activate on that night she disappeared? Why was she doing these things in the woods? Why was she at this specific house? Why not just go into the goddamn thing? Break in, who the hell knows? We don't know. It was unsettling. She was. It was her. She was there, but it's like she wasn't there. Interesting as well. We have more analysts coming. We want to get real close on those eyes, too. We want to see if we can see. We have technology that can see if there's anything behind her eyes, even in that shot from the camera, because it's a pretty good HD shot. Is there anything behind there that could be controlling her? There's interesting. We, you can see possessions, too. Now, some of these people, some of these groups will have things where they have kind of spirit type things that will inhabit bodies and control them to do specific things. All types of fucking crazy stuff. We won't get into all that now. We can get into that afterwards. But I, I gotta go back to this Bridge War trial again. Because there's so a history here. We got us, we're setting up shop there for about a month or two. We're talking to everybody. We're not even just talking about this case. We're talking about cases that have happened for the last 50 years there. This could be a, a portal area. This can be just a, like I'm talking like a full on fucking portal because this Bridgewater Triangle is about a, I'm trying to think if it's like a three mile down, like, you know, three mile down and like a two mile across type thing. Pretty sizable area. This could be a serious jumping point or like a portal area that could open a massive portal to bring in massive, huge things, not just people. We're talking equipment. Who the fuck knows? So we need to talk more, but we don't know. That's the last sighting of her. There's not been another one that she says she isn't around, but she has to be in that area still. I feel like she's trying to do something here. We don't know what. We don't even know if it's something bad or what she's trying to do. We'd love to find her, but we shall see. Now, that is a... There are little details in there as well that I will discuss further. I did not want to take up too much of everybody's time before we get into the thing, but that's really the gist of it. Um, Price here said this earlier. She is 32 years old. Um, that typically doesn't play into it. Sometimes from activations that we've come across, people typically will activate in their mid to late 20s. Not uncommon for someone to activate later than that, but I don't know. Or she kind of triggered the activation herself if she had like an event that happened to her that could cause something to happen. I don't know. I don't know. Or she's working with somebody else or someone contacted her. We don't know. This could be inner universe. This could be who the hell knows. But it's a bit out there for sure. But hey, just want to tell you that. So in a few minutes, we'll take a break here for a few minutes and then we'll gather back up. I want all of your opinions. Thank you all for listening here. All your, I, I welcome everything. All your opinions, your suggestions, theories, it doesn't matter. I want to know it. I take no offense to any of it, okay? I'm always looking for assistance in all this stuff. I'm not going to be one of these egomaniacs who thinks I have the answers to everything. It's not the fucking case, all right? As a team and as a group, we come up with better theories and we come up with better, you know, ways to combat these things and figure them out. All right, so let's take a break here and we'll be back, all right? All right, I'll see you back, but we'll see you about 10 minutes, all right? All right.